Hello Africa, my name is Eunice Tony and if you're tuned in, this is the African Women's Voices show live on ETV Ghana and also live on Facebook at ETV DH. Oh, how I missed you. Today we have an interesting topic to be sharing with you and you really need to grab that popcorn of yours. Sit back because you're going to be enjoying it every step of the way. I am beautifully costumed by Buretex Clothing and you can locate her at the area around the railway center at um, Nyaho Clinic side. If you're just coming from Jowulu, for instance, and you're approaching Nyaho Clinic, you will find the railway line. And then just on the corner around the railway line, you're going to find a very beautiful place, beautiful signboard written Biotex clothing. She's the one who has actually been making me really look good every day and every time when we get to meet. And one thing about her is that she's got something for everyone. If you're plus size, if you're mini, whatever size it is, she's going to do that for you. So you don't even need to go there with your fabric. The fabrics are there already and they're ready made for any kind of outing or style you would prefer. So when you get there, ask for Auntie Mary and tell her that you heard about her service on the African Women's Voices show and she would definitely give you a special treat. And this show is proudly brought to you by Voltic. Voltic says naturally. In these times of the COVID, we are expecting that you keep yourself hydrated with your Voltic. The, the show is also brought to you again by a very special Shito company called Chana Shito. I have it here. So for those of you who actually have been looking for what brand of Shito to, you know, enjoy that rice and that meal, Chana Shito is just the best for you to use. And don't forget that once you take your Chana, you can also always have your Voltic for you to get yourself hydrated in this COVID times. We want to say a very big thank you to our sponsors who have made it possible for us to have these shows every week. And we want to say we are open to much more, you know, um, sponsorship from you out there who is watching us. So we want you to get on board on the show and sponsor us more. Thank you very much, Voltic. Thank you very much, Anna. And thank you very much to you that is watching us right now who is preparing to come and support the program. I'm going to link you up right now to the health segment of the show. And when we come back, I will be introducing our guest for the day. Do stay tuned. And you're welcome back to the African Women's Voices Show on ETV. And if you're watching us live on Facebook, hello. <laughs> okay, just before we went on the break, I spoke to you about Chana Shito. And Chana Shito still has a message for us. It's saying, Chana Shito, your number one choice when it comes to black pepper sauce. Chana Shito is not just regular Shito. It is Shito with difference. Shito with chunks of shrimps and herrings with a great taste. Chana Shito. Food just got tastier. You can find Chana Shito at Max Mart, Garden Mart, and Frame Oil Mart Manette. For bulk purchase, call 0244-481-80 or 024-097-4461. Social media handles are Chana Shito. That's all you need to be able to get closer to Chanachito. And then we also have a message from Vortec, who keeps us hydrated even in this COVID times. And the message is that we should not just throw away our Vortec bottles once we consume it. There are plastic containers around where you could just deposit your Vortec bottle. So once you're done, squeeze it or twist it and then throw it into the designated points across um, various spots nationwide. And GMA, that's Global Media Alliance, our parent group, is saying that you should join us live in broadcast on ETVGH and GBA Facebook Live as we recognize and reward outstanding companies in the beverage industry. Date is on Saturday, 13th June 2020. Time is 6 p.m. Who wins the best spirits, beer, CSR company, local beverage art of the year, 
or the Manufacturing Company of the Year, among others. And who takes home the most prestigious award of the year, which is the Product of the Year? This event is in partnership with Ghana Tourism Authority, Food and Beverage Association of Ghana, Consumer Protection Agency, Food Research Institute of Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, Perception Management International, Sun Seekers Tours, and our media partners. Ghana Beverage Awards, inspiring excellence in Ghana's beverage industry. So we are looking forward to the Ghana Beverage Awards on the 13th of June, on Saturday, and we're going to be rewarding the best of the best in the um, beverage industry. So I know you're already glued, trying to see who it is we're going to be talking to today. She's here with me and she's beaming with smiles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time we get to introduce um, our guests for the show. And uh, today we are speaking with a very young lady who is dynamic and is effecting change in the media space. She's no other person but Pamela Boating. Pamela, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you too. Actually, the way myself and Pamela met was really interesting. We met on Facebook. And this was because I was really intrigued by the beautiful things that Pamela was doing. The fact that Pamela is thinking about how to properly document Ghanaian ideas. Because it's something that we've not been doing in the past. We have ideas, we do things, and somehow we do not document it. And then we hear other countries taking credit for it. Pamela is saying no. Everything Ghanaian must remain Ghanaian. And people need to know that it's actually a Ghanaian idea or a Ghanaian product or a Ghanaian brand. That is one of the changes she's effecting. Let's take, for instance, Anansi. We're going to be talking much about that you know, it, it, later in the show because it's something that's really I'm passionate about and I'm thinking that you should look at it as well and see how you can help us document that. So let me not do much of the talking. I'll allow you to talk here. All right, you're welcome once again to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, so today's topic, we are discussing, you know, um, the media, women in media, and how they are effecting change, positive change. And you're one of the people we've identified who is doing that. And interestingly, you're a very young person, and I'm just wondering, what brought you into this space? What made you decide it's media? Yeah, so right from senior high school, I have always been interested in the media. But for me, it was more of um, coming on TV and reading the news to be a newscaster or a radio presenter. Okay. Now, um, right from senior high school, I then went to the Ghana Institute of Journalism to further my studies to see how best I can come out as a broadcaster, especially on television and on radio. Okay. Now, when I entered the school, I realized that it was more, there was more to it than just being on TV. Correct. Yes. <laughs> You have to learn how to write well. Mm -hmm. You have to up your research skills and all that before you can actually do that. So through the process, and that is how come finally I find myself in the media industry, but not yet on TV or on television, but mostly online or newspaper. Online or newspaper. Yes, oh, yes. nice. So how has it been for somebody who is in this space as a woman? because our emphasis is actually on what women are facing in this space. So how has it been? Have you faced any kind of challenges? Or is it that, I mean, it's really nice to be a woman in this field? Because a lot of times, people who are into communication are more women anyway. Yeah. So somebody may say, okay, we don't have too much competition. Is that what the case really is? Tell us what you're facing. Absolutely not. I mean, uh, it's an interesting journey, especially when you are a woman and you are in the media doing something that you enjoy um, doing. But it is not all rosy. Okay. Yes. Although there are more women in the media or in communications, there, there, there's some sort of competition. There's some sort of hurdles that you have to, you know, pass through to become who you are or to get your breakthrough. Okay. So what yes. is this hurdle? Is that people do not want to listen to you because you're a woman or people feel that you shouldn't penetrate certain places or people feel like you shouldn't tell certain stories? You know, what kind of hurdle well, would it be? Well, for me... Um, it is not just about being a woman. The media landscape generally is competitive. Okay. Yeah, so it depends on how you prove yourself, then you'll be accepted that way. Um, it is not the fact, it is not gender based. It is how well you are able to do your work, how well you are, be, you are able to articulate your, your, what you have to do, how well you are able to deliver. 
that is what pushes you ahead in the career. It is not specific to, to um, gender because we all, whether male or female, face the same hurdles getting into the media landscape. Yeah. First, job. Okay, when you are in journalism school, you always have that beautiful idea of completing school and then coming on TV or becoming a presenter just like you. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the ground, you start studying, you start, you start to intern, you realize that it is not all about coming on TV. There is more work to what you see on television than what it's behind. There's more work on what you see behind the screen. So in other words, it's not all about just looking no, beautiful no, no, on the no, screen. No. That's need, not what the case is. You need is. to pull your weight behind before you come in front of the screen. So some of the challenges, apart from um, difficulty in accessing job opportunities in the industry, there is also some sort of challenges when it comes to accessing information for your work as a journalist, especially when you are young mm -hmm. and you need some information from a big man somewhere, for example, a minister or a CEO of an, um, an organization, uh, it's quite challenging because you are new in the industry and they don't know you. They operate on who I know basis at that level. So your work should prove you enough to have that access to that person, and which I think uh, it, it's not right because um, the information that the person is seeking is for the journalism work that they are doing. Mm -hmm. And if you refuse that person information to add up to their work, their works are always scanty or they don't pre uh, present the true nature of the situation or of the new story. So these are some of the challenges, lack of information, lack of jobs and salary issues, especially when you are starting out as a media practitioner. Most of the media personalities that we see around are not on any you know, structured salary. Okay. Yes. So these are some of the challenges that... So this could be uh, the reason why some of them actually want people to you know, give them something to bring the story out. Yes. That that's is why some of them, yeah. I don't want to generalize because yes, I know not that's every, that's everyone does it. That's why some of them insist on getting something, something before they do their work, which is not right. It's not the best. It's not the best. Okay, so let's, let's move now to what exactly led me to you, which is yeah. what you're doing on Wikipedia. Yeah. Sure. People, I saw what she did around Veronica buck Bucket. I didn't know the origin. I know I just grew up and I saw it. You know, something like you have a bucket and then you have a tap and then you wash your hands. And it became really very popular these days because of the COVID. And she did something really interesting. She decided that she was going to let the whole world know how this bucket came about. And she was able to put, you know, documentation together. And today, if you just go on Wikipedia yes. and you type in Veronica Bucket, you are going to see everything around it itemized. And the fact that it was by somebody here in Ghana and then the whole story around it. I just want to find out from you what exactly led you to this space. Why did you feel that we need to begin to talk about Ghanaian ideas and putting the right documentation in place? Yeah, talking of what got me into this space, mm -hmm. that is becoming a Wikipedia editor. I was introduced to Wikipedia editing by my very good friend, Felix Sinate. Okay. Hello, Felix, wherever you are. Probably is watching. Shout outs <laughs> to you. <laughs> so um, after I got introduced to Wikipedia, I realized that content around women were very minimal if you compared it to content around men okay. on Wikipedia. And as we all know, Wikipedia is the largest encyclopedia, online encyclopedia in the world. So if you are not documenting your history, your culture on there, we are missing out big time on the world of information. So for example, when I joined, um, started editing Wikipedia in 2017, I was looking at Ghanaian actors who are on there, whose work have been documented. And I realized that a Jacko, the local actor, has a Wikipedia page. So I quickly decided to see if um, Chewa, who is, oh, I think, Rose Mensah, who is also a local actress, has a page. I checked and she didn't have. Okay, and on I that Chewa yes, note, yes. we're going to be taking a quick commercial break. When we come back, mm -hmm. we're going to be finding out what happened after she found out that she didn't have a Wikipedia page. We'll be right back.
Yo, welcome back to the show. And just before we went on the break, Pamela was going to talk to us about what she found out around the the, the actress Chewa. She she realized that she didn't have anything or any information around Wikipedia, so she wanted to do something about it. So let's continue the conversation. What happened when you realized that she had nothing on Wikipedia? So when I realized she had nothing on Wikipedia about her works or her contribution, I decided to start an article, a Wikipedia article, about her work. And from then, I went on to do it for other celebrities or other um, entertainers who are female but do not have their works documented. I moved on to doing women in sports, um, like Ethel Jacks, who was um, a tennis queen in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. I created a Wikipedia profile about her, and that was when a lot of people realized that she was actually alive and her contribution towards the Ghanaian sports industry. So that is how come I, be I began to have interest in editing Wikipedia. Fantastic. Yeah. What I like is the fact that you realize that, you know, um, there's something about women that we needed to get out there. And you are doing this with, you know, different people here in Ghana, as you did with the actress, and now into the sports. Um, I want to ask, um, do they really know you do this for them, or you just decide you want to do it? So the thing is, I just decide to do it. And in some instances, some people share it with them. In other um, instances, they are not aware of, of, it, of, at all. of it at all. Wow. Yeah. So it means that you're not doing it just because you want to get something out of it, maybe some financial benefit. It's just because you want the right things to be done. Exactly. And for us to be able to tell our stories the right way. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that we all need to encourage you and to ensure that a whole lot of things about Ghanaians okay. are put on that you know, particular portal where we can tell the Ghanaian stories better. So um, maybe we should, would you want to mention the names of some of them? Or you're just comfortable with just saying a few of them? You um, just don't want to mention their names? Okay, so apart from apart from the ones that I've mentioned, I went on to do one for Ghana's first female photographer who was also Kwame Nkrumah's photographer. Wow. Nisha Alban, she's still alive, and I'm still in talks with her to finally get her picture to add up to her image. Yeah, so wow. she was the first female photographer in Ghana, and the information is on Wikipedia now. I've worked around the first woman to earn her PhD in the tree language in Ghana. She's awesome. currently at the University of Ghana as a lecturer and her profile and achievement has also been documented. There are a lot of women that I, myself and other Wikipedians have worked to ensure that their history and culture has been documented. Okay, yes. nice. So is how can we also help? Let's say for instance, is there a particular way you need to write your story, maybe on Facebook, then it will go there, or is something you have to make a conscious effort to send it to Wikipedia? How do we start? For most of us who don't even have our stories out there, okay. what is the process? What are we supposed to be doing? Okay, so to start with, Wikipedia is um, a community of editors who volunteer their time to put on information over there. So anything that you see on Wikipedia was done by someone. It didn't come automatically. Okay. So to be able to put something on Wikipedia or to make an entry on Wikipedia, for example, ETV, you need to create an account, just like a Facebook account. Your okay. username, your password, and you have to research around the subject or the person you want to put up on Wikipedia. So you get the information, you put it in a nice way, you add references to it. It's very important because some people are of the view that Wikipedia is not accurate okay. or does not present the true reality of the things that is on there. So referencing is a way to check that. So if I say I want to put ETV on Wikipedia, I have to research about the company online, get some um, notable references for the subject and then write it on Wikipedia and save. So it is very, very easy to become a Wikipedia editor. It just takes like 30 seconds for you to create um, your account. Someone gets you through the process and you are an editor of Wikipedia. Okay, so it means it's something that you can do on your own or do we need to look for professionals to be you know, updating this page for us? Yeah, it's something that you can, anybody at all can do on their own. Mm. Only if they have the time and the passion to dedicate to it because you are not paid to be a Wikipedia editor. You do it out of passion and the, the need to create uh, stories over there. So you do it out of passion and you have to have passion to be able to do it. Apart from that, anybody at all can be a Wikipedian. There are a lot of 
such um, people in the community. We have a group that we, we meet, discuss the future of how the community looks like and how we can include more Ghanaian content mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. Wow, awesome. Yeah. There's something else I also saw you did, and this doesn't have anything to do with women anyway. It has mm -hmm. to do with the Ghanaian, you know, dancing pole bearers. Yeah. Because they took the world by storm. storm yeah, and so somehow, yeah. all over, people were just making short videos out of, you know, what they've, yeah. what they've shown us. And there was this time I watched an, um, um, a, a, an, an interview, you know, with them, and somehow they did not even understand that they had gone like this global. And they seemed not to know how to even handle the whole, uh, you know, publicity and how they were just blowing up after BBC did the report on them. So I'm just wondering, so what moved you to also look for ways to also put them on, uh, on uh, Wikipedia? So um, as a Wikipedian, you always have to put your eyes on the ground so that if there is anything that deserves to be documented, you look sharp and then you do it. So um, after I realized the buzz about them, it was important that we keep them in history because during the COVID-19, when we were all on lockdown, mm -hmm. they made people happy with their videos. They really made us they happy. They made people <laughs> happy and it traveled the length and breadth of the country went outside Ghana and quite recently Trump also tweeted their video. Yes. So I realized that it's quite important to document them and what they are doing. It's a way of also selling ourselves to the other parts of the world. The world. So I decided to stay up one night and create an article about them because there were enough references from the BBC, from you know Ghana Web, from the Washington Post and all that. So I created the article on them and after publishing, I realized that another Wikipedian had already started work on started them. Work and on is this them. Wikipedian Ghanaian or from somewhere else? Um, I didn't check the nationality, but Wikipedians are all over the world. Mm -hmm. Trust me, mention any country and you're going to find a Wikipedian mm -hmm. there. So when I saw it, all that I had to do was add more information to enhance the article because okay. the thing is happening in my country and I'll be in a better position so to tell the story tell better. The story better. So that is how it works. You don't claim an article. You put it there, someone else from Nigeria, someone else from Togo who understands the issue can also improve upon it to make it better. Yeah. Wow, that's really lovely. Yeah. And as we speak now, are they aware of what's going on around, you know, their brand on Wikipedia? Do they know? Yeah, I may not know if they are aware. Um, mostly, most people that we write about may not be aware until they want to find out something about themselves, themselves. and they see that Wikipedia is the first, you know, <laughs> option on the search engine. That is how come they get to know that, oh, I'm on Wikipedia. And most of them think it just happened. They don't know that there are a group of people who, who research and put their information there. Up there. And this is very important for us as Ghanaians because we don't like documenting at all. At all. We don't like That's documenting true. at all. So there are a lot of histories that are missing because we didn't have someone to tell us the story. So for us, it's quite important to us to document such histories. I'll give you an example. When Azonto, the dance, became very popular. You actually popped through my mind right now oh. because I was going to ask you, yeah, what sure. do we do about Azonto? <laughs> okay, tell me. So when Azonto became popular, now, um, Ghanaian said it's from Ghana. If you're in Ghana, you know it's originated from Ghana. Then after some time, Nigerians said it's from Nigeria. They started it before us, so it become like a battle. And that is what exactly what happens on Wikipedia. There are Nigerian Wikipedians and there are Ghanaian Wikipedians. So a Ghanaian started the article on Azonto, mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. Now after some time, uh, someone came to change it and was like, no, it is from Nigeria. So it became a battle for some time. Okay. And when it happened that way, the article was locked. It happens when people are trying to vandalize articles. Okay, so the system gets to lock up such articles they when there's patrollers. a bit of controversy. Yes, there are patrollers on there. Like me, when you edit up to a certain level, you get to have the access to lock an article when there are issues or vandalism or okay. battle on the page. So the article was locked for some time so that Wikipedians can research further and better to identify who, who exactly actually is the originator of this. Before it was added to the article and it was opened. And quite interesting, another um, incident was when Ekufuado, President Ekufuado. Okay, but before we go there, now that it's opened, who actually is the originator according to Wikipedia? When you check it, it's from Ghana. Okay. It's from Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> <Now> <laughs> <laughs> these things ha do happen 
<laughs> often. It do happen often. And quite interestingly, one that happened was when the presidential race was on mm -hmm. in 2016, Ekufado time. Yeah. Yeah, 2016. So even before the final, you know, announcement was made that President Ekufado is the winner of the election, people were already on their Wikipedia page trying to put that information there. Sometimes it oh. becomes like a competition. I want to be the first person to put to that put it up information there. there. And as they were counting, it was gearing through um, Ekufuado's side. So someone had already put there that Ekufuado has won. But as we all know, with elections, things can Anything change. Anything can happen, yes. So when it happens like that, and people are trying to force their way to put content on there, it is locked and then opened after everything has subsided. So that is how the platform Yeah, I like the way it's being protected, the way, you know, people's interests are being protected, protected because if yes. there's nothing like that, it means people could always put in whatever it is yes. they want and it keeps changing. Yes. But once they notice that there's something controversial around this conversation, yes. they lock it up until all the better um, investigations have been done, done around it. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So what would you say to mm -hmm. someone who feels that... Um, all we have there is not true because you know when you mentioned started earlier you mentioned the fact that people feel that the information there is really not true and all of that but right now from what you're saying yeah. there is actually um, something that Wikipedia is doing to ensure that the right message is turned out there which we do not know so now we know that there are patrollers who yeah. actually get the chance to lock and unlock whenever you know they feel it's time for them to get to unlock it what yeah. again is happening in wikipedia to make people believe okay. that the information there is the truth okay so apart from the patrollers when you start an article for example when you start an article on a local food let's say banku banku is actually there and a lot of our local foods are there okay when you start an article on banku and you write on Banku, when you say, oh, Banku is for the people of Akan and all that, that means you are trying to put on information that is not accurate. Another Wikipedian editor can quickly check and ensure your content is accurate before it is published. Okay. So when you put information there, it doesn't just go to the public domain. It has to be reviewed by reviewers to ascertain whether the references that you used goes with the information you put out there before the article is approved for the public okay. and in instances where the information is always already out there are still patrollers who try to ensure that the right and uh, the right measures are done to ensure that all information on there are authentic they are verifiable and they are good for public consumption okay so yes, to those of you out there who keep saying that oh the information on wikipedia is not entirely true Pamela is saying you should be able to trust the information there to at least a maximum level because they are putting in measures to ensure that the information there is actually what you need to know. And there's some level of truth, much more you know, truth in what is put out there on Wikipedia. Yeah. So coming back home to our folk tales, yeah. Kwe Kwa Nancy is the spider here in Ghana and that's our hero. When you go to Nigeria, within Ibo land, we talk about Mbe, the tortoise. The tortoise mm -hmm. is actually the hero. So here in Ghana, since we believe that um, the, the spider is the hero of our stories, mm -hmm. we have Kwe Kwa Nancy, or you can just cut it short and say Anansi. Have you noticed that Anansi is now being used in Hollywood and around the world, and we don't really have documentation that says that this is Ghanaian, because... I've watched a lot of cartoons, you know, with my children. There's this episode in uh, um, Miraculous. There's this um, cartoon called Miraculous. And even Anansi was used as a super superhero. And this Anansi didn't look African. He, <laughs> he looked like somebody from, you know, an European. He didn't look like, you know, what we know Anansi to be. <laughs> so are you looking into this aspect or is something being done about it that maybe we probably don't know? Yeah, um... For now, I haven't checked if Anansi is on Wikipedia or not, but I believe there are a lot of articles or stories about Anansi mm -hmm. online. So if it is not there, it should be easier for any Wikipedian to pick it up and create it. But I know there are some young Ghanaians who are trying to, you know, keep Anansi's history by um, through animation. Yes, I think yes. I've seen those people too. Yes, I've too. seen those people too, and I quite remember some few um, months back one of uh, Wikipedians was having a collaboration with them to ensure that that content 
is on Wikipedia. Okay. But as I sit here now, I haven't checked. You can't really uh, say. Yeah. Okay. But so please, I, I know that I'm speaking for a lot of us who are watching. <laughs> we want Anansi to be properly documented mm -hmm. as the hero in Ghanaian folk tales. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way we can keep our history. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that's awesome. So now, let's look at another side yeah. of um, of the media that you are actually focused on. Mm -hmm. We look at online stories. Yeah. And sometimes when you push the stories, one good thing about online stories is the fact that once you put it out there, it's global. Yeah. A lot of people can have access to it and all of that. But sometimes, maybe companies ask us to ask you to put something up, and after some time, another company calls a media person that says, I don't like this story, mm -hmm. I want this story to be pulled down and they pull strings and then those stories are pulled down. Yeah. What do you have to say about stuff like this? Yeah, that's that's an interesting yeah, question. Mm. Yeah, I have been faced with that a couple of times and it happens quite often. I don't know what these um, institutions or officials want to protect. Most often the information that we put out there sometimes are from the same people who are asking us to pull it down. Yeah, the reason why I wanted you to say it was because yeah. of the verification aspect. Yeah. Because you mentioned on Wikipedia, yeah. I mean, there's a process for verification. Yeah. So it means that the stories you also put online yeah. somehow have been verified. Yes. So when you're asked to pull it down, mm. that's unethical, uneth unethical right? It's yeah, very unethical. And one thing I learned from one of my editors, mm. the editor of Ghana Business News, is that if you truly believe that what you've written is accurate and your source is verified and checked, do not put it down. Because mostly some of the information you put out there are right from those people. You interviewed them and they gave their views. Now, upon a second thought, they realized that what they said wasn't accurate or they didn't want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. They have to come back and plead with you to do the needful. But they are not supposed to force you to pull it down because as, as at the time that you reported, that was the truth. That was what the person said. So you have to, you have to stand your ground and say, I'm not pulling it down. And if there are any sanctions you have recording, that is why it is important that when you record people you interview, you keep the recording for at least one year so that in future, when there are any issues, you pull them up. Okay. So I think that is one way we can also look at it and there are people who do not verify journalists or media people who because of clickbait do not verify their information and then the next minute they put an article down the next minute it is down they are apologizing mm -hmm. all they are there are some media they apologize on a daily basis, basis which is embarrassing so one thing that they can do to stop that is to verify we okay. are not in competition to put out the news first it is what who breaks the news first and accurately it is not who, who breaks the news first and the next minute you are trying to pull it down so this is what i think about you know the online stories online and stories. what is happening yes. you know in unethical, unethical ways, ways around, around it, it. Yeah, okay sure. so we'll be coming back again to her we'll go for a quick commercial break do not go away do stay tuned
and you are welcome back so just before we left you know we just gave you that break time we were talking about um, exactly what it is that um, people do with online stories not verifying the stories and then they put it up and then after some time they need to put the story down again and she's saying to us that it's unethical so before you put your story up as an online editor or reporter ensure that you've done the right verification now there's this question i want to ask you pamela are you regretting you know venturing into this um part of you know work into media would no. you say okay i would have loved to be somewhere else not at all not at all not at all from from day one i have been uh, you know i have strong a strong passion for the media landscape but even as at when it wasn't going my way when i had challenges with getting a decent job in the industry i i never gave up i worked harder to ensure that my works are known and that also led me to getting the kind of job or attracting the kind of jobs that i wanted to work on mm -hmm. so i have never never had regrets whatsoever in terms of you know pursuing this path okay yeah. so but is it a path that you started pursuing from childhood or at a point you had to veer into media no i started right at the university okay. so it has been media all Sense, along all <laughs> along all along and how is family taking it because media can be a bit um well sometimes it can be harsh yeah sometimes to you know some people some media practitioners actually get threatened you know by messages they get calls yeah. we're not comfortable with what you've done and we're going to do this to you have you ever received something like that yeah certainly so I think I had um, a close encounter okay. with an organization that I reported um, on their conference and the people did not like the story. So they called me for a meeting and they tried to intimidate me and all that. Uh, at the end of the day, it was solved and I went back into what I love doing. I've never regretted. I can, ima I can imagine <laughs> when people get to sit you down and then yes. try to say stuff to you <laughs> yeah. and even how they could ruin your, you know, your life your because life. if you don't want to put that story down, then you're going to have to face the consequences. Yeah. So did you have to get your family involved in all of this? Like when you face that situation, did you tell them or you probably kept it to yourself because you felt that they would say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is the reason <laughs> why you have to stop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get my family involved. My okay. then editor was a very respected person in the industry so he was able to handle it basically for me and everything was sorted out after that he gave me some advices um, some advice and um, things I'm supposed to do and not so that it doesn't occur in the future and for family when I started initially some were in you know were happy about it and at a point some got like frustrated for me because mm -hmm. You know, having your breakthrough in the media industry, most of the media people can attest to the fact that it is not easy. It is not like going to the nursing training where you are assured of a job at the end of your training. You have to prove yourself time and time again to be able to even secure your first job. So that is how it, it has been for me so far. Okay, so yeah. um, I'm going to be opening the phone lines now. You know, if you're sitting out there and you want to say something to Pamela, this is the time for you to say it. And if you're somebody who really is passionate or interested in this side of work, which is media, fine. And you've got any question that you'd like to ask her, please, as I open the phone lines, I'll need you to give us a call right now. The, the number is 555 Six five seven two seven eight zero five 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 six five seven two seven eight. Give us a call right now, and then Pamela will be able to speak to you. We see that a lot of you are watching us on Facebook Live, and we want to say a very big thank you to you if you're one of our Facebook Live audience. And then those who are watching wherever on TV, you are also awesome, and we thank you for the love and all the the support. And everything that you're doing, you know, at being part of ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Okay, so um, would you say that being a media practitioner is easy for someone who is single or maybe somebody who is married? What would you say about it? Is it something that is really challenging to the extent that it's something that when you're single, it's easier for you to, to work it through? But if you get married, you probably have to slow it down and all that. What would you want to say? over the top of your mind? What, what do you think from what you are experiencing? 
Well, I think it's just like um, every profession. When you are starting out and you are energetic and you okay, are Okay, I'm being told right now, please hold your thoughts <laughs> that we have a caller right now. Hello? Hello, madam. Good evening. Hi, good evening. What's your name, please? Yeah, my name is Daniel. Daniel, please, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Medina. Okay, please talk to us. You're looking, you're looking great. You're looking beautiful. Uh, and, uh, and Pamela, I want to say, I want to say to Pamela, Pamela, you're a great woman. Um, I mind so much. I, I love you. I just love you. Nice, Thank nice, you. nice. Yes, keep doing what you do, boy. Thank oh, you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Daniel, and keep watching the show, okay? Oh, wow. So do you know Daniel from anywhere? Uh, no. You don't? Do you no. see? You've got <laughs> some people who are really, you know, happy with what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so back to the conversation. Yeah. What would you say about being single and being maybe committed to somebody and yeah. being a pr immediate practitioner? Yeah, so uh, as I was saying, um, for every profession, when you are young and energetic, it's your prime time and you have to work harder. It is the same with the media when you start you have to put in your all so that you when you as you age or as you have a family and you're not able to be committed to it as you were before you are able to reap the benefits from previous work that you have done so that is how it is you don't have to slow down when you when you age or when you progress but when it happens that you have to due to family or anything of that sort you, 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 you prepare ahead so that you're able to benefit from what you did while you were younger or en energetic. Okay, yeah. and we have another caller. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Please, what's your name? I'm Lady Nara, calling from Kumasi. Whoa, Lady Nara, calling from Kumasi. Oh, that's awesome. Please talk to us. Yeah, I wanted to say big kudos to Pamela. She's doing a great job. Nice. I'm very happy to see somebody trying to do something different. I know, I know it's not easy, but uh, I'm very proud of what she's doing. And can she leave any of her contact email or something, WhatsApp or anything? She will. At the end of the show, she's going to leave every detail, her phone number and then her social media handle so that you can follow her and ask her more questions. Great. And even how Great. you can even get to document yourself and what you're doing, sure. you know, on the encyclopedia sure. page. Good. <laughs> I'm happy that ETV <laughs> Ghana you. was we able to get you to know about this. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. And Bye. keep watching the show, okay? Sure. Sure. All right. Oh, yeah. Pamela. You are an inspiration to people. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, it feels I'm really good it. because I think the reason why a lot of us are really passionate about this is the fact that, you know, this is something really different. As Nelinara is saying, yeah, exactly. nobody is thinking about how do we document things about Ghana? Yeah. How are we doing it? Because you go to our muse museums, we find things there, but you could tell that there are certain things that if we really took documentation into, you know, consideration, would have had more you know, Probably. to be able to show people. But, well, it's never too late, according yeah. to what you're saying. Yeah, and the biggest news around it is the fact that you're a very young person. Yeah. Usually, we'll be expecting that something like this will be coming out from somebody who has really, you know, it's stood the great. test of time, some very mature person who has lived life and is, like, giving an advice and all of that. But surprisingly, it's a very young person who thinks that we have to do things right. Yeah. And we really would like to say thank you so much for all you're doing for Ghana and how you are trying to document, you know, our ideas and our pieces. And ETV Ghana is ready to support you. Once you want to tell the story, we are here. We want to know more about what you're doing and how you are getting more ideas, you know, of Ghanaians being documented. And even if you need us to get more people to begin to send information to certain portals, yeah. to be able to give you the information that you need, we are ready to support. For Ghanaians, we always show love. Yeah. Once you just let us know that, oh, it's in the interest of our country, we are ready to ensure that mm -hmm. the story and the right story is actually being told around us. Yeah. So we want to say a very big thank you to you for coming on the show. Thank but you we're not going to me. let you go like that because we have a very beautiful piece from Chana. Chana here is our, one of our sponsors. And Chana is a beautiful pepper sauce. And according to... The story around chana, if you use chana as a pepper sauce in your meals, it will be lickable. Mm -hmm. 
it will be sweet. It will be delicious. <laughs> and whoever it is that tastes it will know that there's a different kind of pepper sauce that you've used. In Ghana, Shito is one of the stories we need to tell. So please, start with the Chana, okay? And tell <laughs> the story about the origin of Shito. All and right. let us know how <laughs> Shito is making homes happy and making homes delicious. Starting with Chana, okay? okay. So Chana is going thank to be saying so a very big thank you to you. We are going to give you a parcel from Chana. Thank and you. then Voltec, who is our hydrating sponsor, who says that... Once you take Voltic, just keep saying naturally because Voltic is a, from a purely natural source. So they want to keep you hydrated as you go, as you research, when you sit down and you're burning the midnight <laughs> candle. You know, Voltic wants to say, sip your Voltic and continue writing. Sure. So they're giving you the support all the way, okay? So sure. as you leave us, we're going to be giving you your parcels, Kind Ketsi, Voltic, and Chana Sheto. I'm Thank also beautifully much. clothed by Biotex Clothing. And I mentioned earlier when we started the show that Biotex Clothing can be located just around Nyaho Clinic, the railway line. If you look at the corner, you're going to find a very beautiful place with a beautiful signboard saying Biotex Clothing. And they've got every kind of dress need you're looking for. Whatever the occasion, Biotex is going to get you sorted. And the good thing about it is that we've got it in sizes. So whatever you want is just readily available. This is not the time you're going to be picking up fabrics and then you keep calling, have you finished with my clothes? No. Once you walk into Biotex clothing, everything is ready. You just need to fit and see which one works for you. So go to Biotex Clothing and let them know that you heard about them on ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. And as I always say, they would give you a treat. And do not forget that on the 13th of June, we're going to be having the Ghana Beverage Awards where we are going to be saying Ayiko to all our beverage companies and then to the outstanding ones. Who goes home with the best product of the year, the best manufacturing company of the year, the best of the best. I'm not going to be saying more. I just want you to tune in on Saturday, um, 13th June, and then it's going to be live on Facebook at ETVGH and at G GBA's Facebook page as well. You get to watch and see what's going to happen in the beverage space. We also have our telenovelas that have been happening on ETV. 8 p.m., Yeah, Telly Galleon is going to be showing. So please do not forget to watch Yeah, yeah Terry Galleon. And, uh, well, it's funny how time flies when you're having fun. I'm really, really having fun, but I want to say thank you so much for getting the time to watch me every Tuesday at 4 p.m. The repeat broadcast is shown on Saturdays at 12. So if you missed some portions of this, well, no problem. 12 o'clock, ETV Ghana, tune in and you get to watch the, the repeat broadcast. So see you same time next week as I bring you another interesting topic with another prolific African woman. Thank you very much for watching and bye-bye.